Mike Rocco. Thank you for joining us for the second half of our presentation today, uh, talking about long-term care, uh, particularly on the Big Island. My name is Russell Kokobun. I serve as the senator from the second district on the Big Island, which includes uh, all of Ka'u, Puna, and part of Hilo. And I'm joined today by um, my co-host, uh, Bob Lindsay, the Hawaii Island uh, trustee for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. We also have a number of distinguished guests with us today, um, and I'd like for them to introduce themselves just so that uh, all of you in the audience can uh, know who they are. Uh, I'm Dr. Craig Shikuma. I'm a solo practitioner since 1980, a native of Hilo, and uh, I'm long-term care director at Hilo Medical Center, also East Hawaii Regional Board member. I'm Stuart Ho. I'm uh, a president of AARP Hawaii and uh, also a chair of the uh, State uh, Long-Term Care Commission. I'm Lisa Fujikawa, the general manager at Regency at Hoela Lai, which is an assisted living facility in Kailua Kona on the Big Island. Well, I guess maybe if we could just very quickly get to uh, some on the ground solutions to long care uh, here in Hawaii. In our first segment, we talked about framing the issue and the challenges that we are facing. So, you know, you're on the ground, Lisa, on the west side of our island. In terms of solutions to the crises, to the train wreck that Stuart, you know, has so graphically described we are facing, um, what are some of, in terms of solutions? It, it's such a complex um, problem. Um, there's the bed crunch that everybody talks about. Um, one of the solutions is if the long-term care residents that are in nursing homes, if they are at a level that can be um, taken care of in assisted living, then that would free up the bed um, in the nursing home, which would allow the acute care hospital to move a patient there that which would free up the bed in the acute care setting. Um, that's, that's one solution um, of the problem. Um, the other problems of, you know, the shortage of um, caretakers or CNAs the programs um, are very limited and they're expensive for the for the average um, care caretaker who wants to get this training. It's eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars per person. If there could be some funding, either to to facilitate these people to get trained, then. Um, there would be more care workers um, in the community. Um, increasing community services. Um, everybody wants to be taken care of at home, but yet they're not safe at home um, in a lot of situations. Setting up, kind of thinking out of the box and doing a, a kind of a neighborhood watch program, kind of a community-based you know, where just like home health nursing, where we have you know people to go in and and check on on these folks to make sure they're okay um, be, before they get to a level of where they would have to go into either assisted living or um, or a nursing home. There's there's the co problem is so complex that. There's, there's many um, ideas to go along with, with the problems. The interesting thing about uh, <coughs> the, the complexity of the problem also uh, kind of spills over into uh, how do you access these services and who puts them in order. And uh, for any one patient, you know, every patient is a special case. You know, how are you going to, how are you going to know what services are even available for that, for that patient? And uh, we run into that problem uh, in private practice. Uh, I run into the problem a lot. You know, I, I just don't know what's available a lot of times, or you know, what what service would fit this patient, uh, what what can help him with help this patient with chore services, or what can help him with his bandages, or you know, 
uh, you can you can get organizations involved. But sometimes you know there's there's overlap between organizations that help out a patient. Sometimes they don't overlap, and maybe they should. Uh, I don't know if there's some kind of way to organize you know uh, organize services where you can you, you can take out the universal playbook on this patient who just had a hip fracture and is kind of unsteady at home. Okay, what can I what can I access for this patient? A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, the Office of Asian tries to do that uh, on the Big Island. I think they do a pretty good job, but you know, funding, government, and yeah. So Craig, forth. is yeah. that that uh, ADRC that uh, the new facility or at uh, Sun Sun Mall? Is uh, that the Office of Aging that you uh, no, uh, facility? No, uh, co the County Office of Aging is okay. what we access. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So that that they're, they're, they help out, you know, the physician's office. But I'm not sure if that, you know, is their primary uh, uh, goal. I mm -hmm. think I think they do organize services quite a bit, and. Uh, you know, I would hope that there is some organizational framework that, uh, you know, as as hopefully we put in more resources into into different services, outpatient services, to take care of patients. I'm a long-term care director, but you know, like anything else, I would want <coughs> patients to stay at home. That's the best. That's the best, uh, you know, environment for for them, especially when they're frail and they're elderly, and maybe and at the end of their lives, you know, uh, I would want to stay at home. But long-term care services, institutionalized services especially those services where you uh, reha rehabilitate patients, uh, well, there, there's always going to be a place for that. You know, some, you know, uh, the Office of Aging statistic, I think 15% of over 65, you know, will use long-term care services one time or another, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, well, if we could, Stuart, can you jump in at this point? Yeah, well, um, first of all, let me say that I'm, I'm speaking uh, at this particular session as, uh, as president of AARP Hawaii and mm -hmm. not uh, as chair of the uh, long-term care commission yes. because we have it's what's what the long-term care commission is doing is a so it's basically a work in progress and so I, I don't think it's uh, it's reasonable for me to express any views uh, on behalf of the commission um, <clears throat> ARP has been uh, deeply interested in this thing for quite a while because and at the national level uh, we're getting a lot of national attention on Hawaii by the national organization. Um, <clears throat> its research facilities have been made available to us and uh, they've had a, a couple of very, very deep and good surveys uh, conducted uh, of Hawaii and of all the islands, as a matter of fact. Uh, and uh, the most recent one uh, was uh, in uh, 2008, uh, January of last year. And uh, I'll uh, I'll get into that in a second, but talking about solutions in general, um, my belief is that um, what the long-term care system, need, system needs is nothing less than a very large infusion of capital, of money. Uh, and the industry itself can basically sort itself out by demand supply, but unless that unless that infusion of capital is there, uh, you're not going to see a lot of attention paid to long-term care services. Um, so, um, um, the, the AARP last year did a, a survey of um, uh, basically, you know, where do we get this, this money? Uh, let, me, let me start with that. Um, it's fairly clear that the state can't afford to pay for the bill. Uh, they, they can barely afford to pay for the bills they got right now, uh, let alone a new program of, say, long-term care. Uh, it's pretty clear also that the federal government, with its uh, uh, umpteen trillion dollar deficit, uh, is uh, probably not going to get around to long-term care, even though Senator Kennedy has a separate bill in, uh, in the Senate uh, uh, on long-term care uh, insurance, uh, a national long-term care insurance program. Um, it's not even clear, uh, it's pr probably less clear uh, 